What is it that a man wants from his wife? What is the primary emotion that he wants from his wife? Well, the primary emotion, according to modern psychologists, I'll bring in the Quran and Sunnah later. The primary emotion that men want from their wives is that of respect. And by the way, I can bring in the Quran and Sunnah to demonstrate this reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الرِّجَالُ قَوَّامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ that men are qawwam over women. And qawwam means to be in charge of. This is the literal meaning of the Quran. Qawwam means the one who will take care of the other. Qawwam means the one who will be the one in charge. So what is the one in charge? The one who is shown respect. And we have that famous hadith. And no doubt this hadith is misused and abused. And we have to point this out as well. But it is the famous hadith that when once Mu'adh ibn Jabal came back from Syria, and he entered the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ and he fell down in sajda in front of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said to him, Ya Mu'adh, what are you doing? Who told you to prostrate to me? Why are you doing this? So Mu'adh ibn Jabal said, I returned from Syria. I found the people prostrating to their rabbis and their elders out of respect. And I felt you deserve this respect more than those priests and those rabbis. What did our Prophet ﷺ say? It's a famous hadith. I should say it's an infamous hadith. All of you have heard of it. But I want to be clear here, it's not my job to apologize on behalf of what the Prophet ﷺ said. It's not my job to cover up his teachings. It is my job to teach those teachings whether a person likes them or not. What did the Prophet ﷺ say? Verily, Allah has forbidden any human to prostrate to another human. Hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, Abu Dawud and Tirmidhi, it's clearly authentic. Verily, Allah has forbidden any human to prostrate to another human. But if he were to have allowed this, if a concession were to have been made, there is no concession. If a concession were to have been made, I would have told the wife to prostrate to her husband out of what the respect and duty she owes to him. Now, what is this prostration? It is the prostration of respect. The prostration of respect. And what does this show? That the wife gives respect to the husband. And what will the husband give back? The husband will give back that love, that cherishing, that nurturing that the wife craves. So the question is, what does it mean for the wife to respect the husband? So what does it mean to show him respect? A few very specific points. Number one, respect his knowledge and his judgment. Wives, respect your husband's knowledge and judgment. When your husband makes a decision, don't double guess him. Don't doubt him. Don't try to make him feel he's, he's not intelligent. He's not qualified to do what he's doing. In other words, don't treat him like a child. Classic example. Classic example happens all the time. Husband is driving and the wife thinks that this is the wrong way. The wife says, no, you should exit here. You just missed the highway exit. This is where you're supposed to exit from, right? What has just happened here? The husband becomes irritated. I know where I'm going. Don't worry. I know it's right ahead, right? What's happened here? Well, the wife has doubted her husband's sense of power, sense of being in charge, sense of responsibility. And what happens here when, they, when a husband is challenged, he becomes, what's he going to become when he's challenged? Argumentative. He becomes, immediately he'll, he'll retort back, what do you know? You did this, you did that. Now, if he turns out to be wrong and you were right, this leads me to point two. Suppose you were right, that was the exit. Well then, this leads me to point two. Let the husband make his mistakes and learn from his own mistakes. Because when he makes a mistake, he won't be able to get angry at anybody else. But when you make a mistake and you tell your husband to make that mistake, you're never going to hear the end of it and you all know what I'm talking about. Let the husband make his mistake and let him learn from his mistake. And don't become his mother. Believe me, no man wants to marry a motherly figure. He has his mother, alhamdulillah, for that. He doesn't want his wife to start lecturing him, to start daunting him, like only his mother is allowed to daunt him, right? Mothers have privileges, they don't extend to their daughter-in-laws. So, suppose he did take that wrong turn. Suppose he missed the exit. Guess what? He's never going to miss that exit ever again. He's learned from his mistake. And the fact that you didn't put it in his mind, you didn't, you were just quiet. You let him do his decision, khalas, no big deal. Next time it's not going to happen. The third point about showing respect. Trust his capability in taking on the projects that he wants to take on. Don't be sarcastic or diminishing of any project he feels that he wants to do. So for example, there's a leaky faucet and your husband comes in with the toolbars, the plumbing, the, the, the wrench and everything. And you're like, 
you're going to fix the leaky faucet? What have you just done? You've taken his ego and you didn't just take a pin and per you took a knife and you thrust it in his heart. Like literally the husband will say, if I can't even take care of a leaky faucet, you don't think I'm take capable of this. What do you think I'm capable of? What you've done is, and I'm going to be very frank here and I speak as a man. Men, I'm sorry and I apologize for giving the secret away, but I have to for our own marriages. Men, I know this is going to come as a shock to you sisters. Men have big egos. I know it's going to come as a shock to you. Their egos, mashallah, tabarakallah. So if you do anything to diminish that ego, you have hurt male pride. You have hurt male pride. So you let the man foster his ego. Let him, if you think he's self-deluded, let him be self-deluded. He'll love you back in return. And in the end of the day, that's what you want, don't it? Doesn't it, right? You want to be loved and cherished and admired. Let him make a mistake. And I will tell you another thing, sisters. Frankly, if your husband does take on a challenge, you will be surprised when nine times out of ten, he'll actually finish it in a decent manner. This is the fact of the matter. When men make mistakes, they'll go back and do it again and do it again and do it again until they get it right. Allah created us that way. Allah created us that way. For you to hover over him and always pinpoint him or find a fault or diminish his, his ego. Honestly, this is very problematic. And frankly, it's humiliating and painful for the delicate male ego. The man feels he's the protector. If you will challenge him and say, how can you protect me from a leaky faucet? Then you have basically said, I don't trust your judgment. You have basically said, I don't feel you're qualified to take on protecting me and taking care of the household. The bottom line, let him take on his challenges. Suppose he wants to write a book. Suppose he wants to do a project. Let him do it. Let him find out his own way. Maybe he's not the best plumber. Fine. But when you diminish his ego, this will cause problems in his heart for you. He's not going to love you the way you want him to love you. You need to allow him the impression of being the nourisher, the provider, the qawwam. He's the one who will protect you. So you take refuge in him. You seek shelter in him. Yes, honey, you will fix the leaky faucet. And guess what? Inshallah, he will actually end up fixing the leaky faucet. Also, when you must bring up something negative, and sometimes you have to, I'm not saying you always be quiet and never point out a mistake or something. When you must bring up something negative, choose your wording and the tone of your voice with great caution. One of the main reasons that men complain about the nagging of their wives, always the wives are nagging, right? Is because they feel a woman's nagging is equivalent to disrespecting. A man feels that the wife who always reminds me, again, back to the leaky faucet, right? Honey, you haven't fixed the faucet yet. Can you fix the faucet? It's been a week. It's been two weeks. When are you going to fix the faucet? When you keep on putting it this way, what's happening? The man will feel now a hatred to fix the faucet. She's bothering me so much. It's not going to bring about a positive change. Rather, you allow him the opportunity in a positive tone. So for example, now by the way, the reason why the man is not fixing the faucet is because he has other priorities. He has a deadline at work and he knows that deadline is more important than the leaky faucet. He has other issues, his own priorities, right? You don't have those priorities, he does. So what you do is you remind him in a gentle manner, honey, I know I've reminded you last week of the faucet. I know you have other things to do. Whenever you get a chance, inshallah, can you take care of that? It's just a tone. It's just a positive attitude rather than being negative. Not to be sarcastic, but rather to be somewhat positive. And if you must complain, never use the phrase you, rather use the phrase I. Let me give you an example. Your husband comes home late and he didn't call you. He didn't call you, he's late from work. Then you get angry at him. You never call me when you're late. You should always call me. What have you just done? Daunted him, right? Mothers and fathers can say that to their children. Better you must call before you're late. Yes, that's fine. But for the wife to do this, honestly, it's not going to bring about the love. You know what? I will teach you that phrase when you say it. Wallahi, every time he's late, he will call you. What is that phrase? Honey, you didn't call me and you were late. And I was worried for you. Instantaneously, I got worried. I didn't know where are you. I didn't know what to do. This instantaneously, you will give him such a big guilt trip, he'll go to the moon and come back for you. It's just a matter of phrasing it so that you make him feel like a man. You were supposed to take care of me and you didn't because you made me feel worried for your safety. That's all you did. Rather than treat him like a child, rebuke him, you become the wife. And you say, I got worried you were late. 
I was waiting for your call, right? When you put it on yourself, and, and this applies to any situation, by the way. Suppose the husband was a bit harsh in something that he said. Rather than saying, you always say that, you should say, I felt hurt when you used this phrase. Change it back on you. And when you say, I felt hurt, automatically the husband will feel, man, I was too harsh, I shouldn't have done that. He will feel guilty. And that's what you, you want your husband to feel when he is a bit harsh at you. You want him to feel guilty. When you rebuke him, he's not going to feel guilty. And you all know this from experience, right? You want him to feel like a man, be a woman. And he'll feel like a man. Act as a woman, act in a feminine manner. And he will come and be your savior and your knight in shining armor. But you have to be the damsel in distress to get that knight in shining armor. Until you're the damsel in distress, that knight in shining armor is never going to appear. The final point for the sisters. Never, ever in any circumstance, crack a joke about your husband's honor or capabilities in public. Never do this. It's always going to be very detrimental. The husband never wants to be made fun of by his wife. And that is not going to bring about anything positive in the husband. Sisters, let me ask you, would you like it if your husband teased the way you looked in public? If your husband talked about the few pounds you've gained over the summer in Ramadan in public? How would you like it? Well, male egos are even more fragile, as I said. So if you ridicule something they attempted, if you ridicule the project that they did in public, you are really hurting his ego. Rather do the opposite, praise him. Next time you're at your in-laws, you have his parents there, praise him and praise him to, to the face of his parents and his relatives. MashaAllah, he takes such good care of me. MashaAllah, he's a loving person. Suppose he washed the dishes once last year, just once. You say, MashaAllah, Tabar Allah, he washed the dishes. Believe me, the next day he's going to wash the dishes for you. It's a matter of positive encouragement. Positive encouragement. You be that damsel, he will become your prince and your knight in shining armor.